Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is in Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. This is known as the parable of the vineyard workers. Once again, this is in the NLT Bible. For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and he saw some more people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them that he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard at noon and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed that they would receive more, but they too were paid a daily a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only an hour, and yet you've paid them as much as you paid us who worked all day in a scorching heat. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it again against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. So once again, Jesus gives a parable, which he uses a everyday story to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. In Jesus' parables, they either conceal from the unbeliever the truth, or they reveal the earthly story to the believers. This parable is related to his point in his conversation with the rich young ruler and his disciples. Our entrance into heaven depends on God's grace, not our righteous works. And our rewards in heaven will be based on God's reckoning, not human calculations. Not what we want, it's what God wants. Jesus' statement of who would be first and who would be last opens and closes this parable. Jesus accepts the children and rejects the wealthy young man. Then he predicts the reversal from the lastness of his apparent defeat in death back to the firstness of his triumphant resurrection. So verse 1 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. So here Jesus is introduced the main characters. He introduces the landowner who's representing God and the hired laborers which are his believers. The landowner needs men to plant, tend, and harvest his crops. Early in the morning is important because this because the time is an important feature of this parable. The average workday was likely from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, that would be from sunrise to 6 p.m. sunset. So the landowner of the parable was scouting for workers before 6 a.m. So he's looking for these workers before workday starts. Verses 2 through 5 says, he agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At 9 o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them that he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard at noon, and at, again at 3 o'clock, he did the same thing. So he noticed the first group of people, he made an agreement with them. They would give him a day's wage. And the other ones, he told them that he would pay them what seemed right. So the men who had been hired to begin 12-hour workday at 6 a.m. from the first and the most prominent of the five work groups he hired throughout the day. They agreed to work for customary rate of one denarius, which is a normal day's wage in that time, and they started working in the vineyard. We may be tempted to think that this first group represents those who have been Christians for most of their lives, whereas the later groups are those who come to Christ later in life. Some think that the full day workers are those who are especially faithful in their lifetime as, as a Christian, while the later groups are not so faithful. But don't let us distract this don't let that distract us from Jesus' main point. That God's way of compensating for righteous working may differ from what we expect. So God's fairness and our fairness differ. 
He does not compare us to one another, but to our fulfillment of our own stewardship. Three hours later, the landowner still needs more workers. He went to the marketplace again, where most commercial transactions took place, and where the men were hoping to work would gather. So these guys are all out there waiting for someone to come out and give them a job. He hired this group, promising, I'll pay you whatever was right at the end of the day. Because these men had been, who would only be working nine hours instead of 12 hours, they would have been expected three quarters of a day's pay at the end of the workday. He did the same thing at noon and at three o'clock, and naturally these guys would expect proportionately less pay than those who started at 6 a.m. In verses 6 through 7, it says, At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, Why haven't you been working today? They replied, Because no one hired us. The landowner told them, Then go out and join the others in my vineyard. So at 5 o'clock, it would be one hour from quitting time, the landowner hires a, yet a fifth group of workers, the second most prominent group in Jesus' parable, because they stood in greatest contrast to those who were hired at 6 a.m. He sent these laborers into the field also to work. These last workers, for whatever reasons, were last by normal human performance standards. Jesus was about to challenge normal human reasoning and standards when it comes to the kingdom's rewards. So that gives us in the verses 8 through 10. It says, That evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed that they would receive more, but they too were paid a day's wage. So at evening, which means 6 p.m., the workers could no longer see the work. So the foreman added a sense of reality to the story, since the landowner himself would not have gone to the field to call the workers at the end of the day. The landowner instructs this foreman to pay the workers in reverse order, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first ones he hired that morning. The last group hired, who only worked one hour, were paid first, before the eyes of all the workers earlier that day. And to everyone's surprise, these one-hour workers were paid a full day's pay, twelve times more than they should have earned. The three-hour, six-hour people, and the nine-hour workers are not mentioned here, but we assume that they all received the same pay as the day's wage. Jesus jumped immediately from the one-hour workers to the twelve-hour worker to make an obvious contrast between these two. The twelve-hour workers were encouraged by what they observed, assuming that the landowner would have paid them more than he would the workers who hadn't worked as much. They were expecting more than one day's pay. To their disappointment, that was exactly what they were paid. So they expected more. They seen what these other people made, and they thought they were going to make more money. But to their dismay, he didn't get paid. They got paid exactly the same. And Jesus explains it in the next two verses, 11 and 12. He says, when they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people who worked only one hour, and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us, who worked all day in the scorching heat. So who can identify with, with their disappointment? You know, every one of us would think that wouldn't be fair. So they fell victim to the problem of expectations that they were higher than reality. You know, many of us... Like many of us today, they de had developed a sense of comparison and entitlement. So they grumbled. You have made them equal to us. They only worked one hour, and you paid them just as much as you were paying us to work all day in the scorching heat. Did the full-day workers look down on the one-hour workers because they were passed over as unworthy earlier in the hiring? You know, maybe that was why they were mad. But Jesus reveals the way we humans think about what's fair and just. When we see rewards handed out in heaven, we're going to be surprised for some of the things that we see. Some of the people in the ministries that are that we have seemed in insignificant will be celebrated, while many of the more prominent people in their ministries will be less recognized. Jesus isn't trying to explain the criteria for such decisions, but only to warn us about false assumptions and expectations. You know, sometimes we expect more than what we deserve. Jesus is making the point that the heaven's rewards are based on God's standards and our faithfulness to our calling in both attitude and action. 
there will be no negotiations with God. Christians must avoid looking down on others for comparison. We can't compare ourselves to someone else. We only need to compare ourselves to ourselves. Only Christ himself is the accurate one, and we all fall short of his stature. This is why our need for God's grace is a must, and we must and we need to hold on to human thinking. We need to hold our human thinking in check. So verses 13 through 15 says, He answered one of them, Friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So the landowner focuses on the 12 workers. One of the 12 workers. Emphasizing the responsibility of each individual believer to keep his thinking in check. First he calls him friend. He said in a calm, reasonable tone. The landowner then explains that he had been fair to the 12-hour workers, paying exactly what was right. That's what he, they agreed upon in the beginning of the day. If it had been for the people who worked fewer hours, the 12-hour workers would have gone home satisfied with the exact same amount. But these people weren't because they saw the other ones made just as much as they did. So the landowner urged them to focus on their original statement, not on the other workers. With their agreement that one day's pay was exactly what they were entitled to, no less or no more, because that's what they agreed to. Jesus drew a contrast between the landowner's fairness with the 12-hour workers and his desire for generosity to the one-hour workers. So he's shown generosity to these other people. This contrast does not indicate that the landowner was inconsistent. God's not inconsistent. But to emphasize that differing responses were the decision of the landowner. It's all God's decisions, not ours. And if the landowner had underpaid any of his workers, they would have had reason to accuse him of injustice. But there was no law for overpaying people. So he never underpaid them, he just overpaid. The employer was free to do with his money as he wished, this points out that the Lord is both sovereign and gracious. Then finally, the landowner addresses the root of the problem. They were envious because the landowner was generous. Their perspective was wrong. This parable highlights both the injustice and the grace of God. Neither is to be taken for granted. When God chooses to reward or punish according to what is justly done, no one has the right to complain. We don't have a right to complain what God gives us. God's gifts are not something we deserve. We, none of us are good. We all fall short. They are given freely at his discretion. If anyone thinks they received the raw end of the deal, by our reasonings, it would be God who gives us much more than he owes us. We can't outgive God. And in verse 16 it says, So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. Jesus wraps up this parable with the principle which he started. The principal point of this parable, we do not understand the justice behind the last being first and the first being last. We must reserve judgment and thank God for being consistently just and abundantly gracious. Jesus was saying that we can be assured that the sacrifices of his followers will always be recompensated fairly and abundantly, but the final determination is up to God our Father. So what this is a, pretty much about is God's grace isn't doesn't seem fair to us, but it is. His grace is based on what he decides. So what, what they're saying is if, if you've been a Christian since 12 years old and you got saved and you've been a pastor or, or someone who's been a believer your whole life for 40 or 50 years, and then say I come in like now, probably around... 40 years old, I started getting closer to God. You know, I, I always believed in God, but now I'm getting closer and I'm starting to do God's work for him by doing these videos and, and talking to people about him. But that doesn't seem fair to a Christian that's been a Christian their whole life. That if I get saved and then I go to heaven. And that's the same as an 84 year, year old man who's on his deathbed and talks to a pastor and he gets saved and he, he confesses his sins and takes Jesus as his Lord and Savior. That isn't fair to them, me, that someone lived his life the way he wanted to for 84 years and then two hours later, you know, he gets saved and then he dies and goes to heaven. But that's not our choice. That's not 
God wants as many of us as he can to go to heaven. And that's what this parable is about. It's about his grace. You know, we, we don't need to focus on when we become a Christian and when we become saved because it's all about God's grace. But remember, don't wait till you're 84 because you might get in a car accident. You're not promised tomorrow. You might die suddenly, and if you're not saved, you're going to hell. That's the, that's the raw end of the deal right there. But you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know, how many years in your life did you stand idle? I've done it for a long time. I went to church until I was about 18, and I quit going until I turned around 40. I stood idle in my life. I knew God was with me. I could feel him. He's always looked out for me, and I've been blessed my whole life. But God gives us our gifts in life for his benefit. Just like he told Abraham, he was going to make his name famous. And in order to make, and because he made Abraham's name famous, he made God's name famous because he was faithful and just. And we don't need to worry about what others are doing. We can't worry about if someone else has got saved two hours before they died. That's not for us to decide. That's for God. You know, God has all the glory. God sees the big picture. We don't. So we just need to be thankful that someone did get saved before they died and went to heaven. You know, we're not, like I said, we're not promised tomorrow. And God gives us what we need, not by your greed. You know, we're greedy people. We want everything to be around us. We're self-centered. And that's a hard thing not to be. You know, we ask for things like money, status, power, popularity, or what a person would think would be a good match for us. I mean, we want the applause of men and not the applause of God. And Garth Brooks had a, a good song. He said, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. This is so true. There's a lot of times I prayed for things in my life that if I would have got, my whole life would have turned out differently. And I've been blessed, and I thank God every day for some of them things that I prayed for that he didn't give me, because I know it would have changed who I was. So just stop standing idle. Go to work for God. It doesn't matter where you're at in your point of life. Just get saved. And that's what this parable is about. That's why Jesus says, for those who are first to be last, and those who are last to be first. Some of these pastors that are out here preaching their whole life truly don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe the things that they preach about so they could be last in heaven or not even make it and some people who two hours before they die get saved or later in their lives in their 60s they start going to church and get saved will be first in heaven so that just shows you that all you got to do is follow god and believe in him and you'll you'll make it to heaven he has patience and he has grace. Because if God didn't have patience, we'd all be dead. Because we all fall short of his glory every day. Thank you for listening to my video. And amen. Um, please like my videos. Um, comment in my videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please share my videos to get the word out. We're just trying to glorify God. That's the main reason for all these videos. Is to show God's glory. Thank you for listening. Amen.